Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. In the last video, I spent some time with you showing you some of the new features for visual data preparation that are in the June 2017 release of ClickSense. In this video, I'm going to focus on some of the visual analytics features and new visualizations that are available. So to jump right into it, you'll notice that we are in that app that we created in the first video with all the visual data preparation features. And now I have a number of new visualizations that are available. And I'm going to go through each of those. So you'll notice we have a box plot, a distribution plot, and histogram to add those to the mix. So before I actually use the distribution plot, I'm going to start out with a bar chart first. And then you can see how the distribution plot visualizes the same data. And you can draw a comparison as to which is easier to visualize. So I'm going to grab a bar chart. And for a dimension, I'm just going to select a uh, country and a measure. I'm going to do sum of sales. And then I'm going to go to my fields list, and we're also going to visualize category name. Okay, so we have two dimensions in here. So basically, we're performing uh, a grouping, if you will. So if we go to appearance, you can see that the presentation is grouped. So we have our country as the first group level, and then we're looking at the product categories within each group. So if I scroll to the right, now you can see it's sorted across the bottom by country name, and this visualization bar shows you the different values for the categories for each um, country. In this particular example, it's not entirely too visually appealing, nor can you quickly jump to uh, a particular decision based off of the data without having to scroll all the way to the right, let's say, to see these large visual bars. Okay, now I'm going to take the same data that we have here, and I have a um, table that represents the data as well, so you can see what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to go and grab our distribution plot, and I'm going to convert this bar chart to distribution plot. And then I'm going to change it to horizontal. Okay, and then I'm going to reorg my data to look at category and then country. Okay, now by looking at this particular visualization, each dot represents a category, and the gray background represents the range of sales. So in this case, we have zero for the United States, and then we go all the way to the end, we have over four million. So let's go into an analysis mode, sort by sales. There we go, and there's the United States. Okay, so you can see sportswear, women's wear, baby wear, men's clothes, bath clothes, men's footwear, ladies' footwear, and children's wear. So each one of these dots basically represents those sales within the United States. And it's a lot easier to visualize the range of data by just looking at the positioning of the dots across this particular chart versus, you know, grouping them within that particular bar chart. Okay, now these only have a small subset. So just imagine this with a large data set. So you can actually see where some of the dots overlap slightly as well. Okay, so this will allow you to depict that range of data for more than one dimension. Okay, so there's United Kingdom, Germany, Brazil, etc. Okay. Let's delete these. Uh, the next one I want to show you would be the histogram. So you could always do a histogram with a class function. So just to give you an example, if I take the bar chart and for my dimension, I actually use the class function. If I go into the expression class, and then you put in the measure, in this case sales, and then you put in the bucket amount. Like for example, I want to look at sales, you know, grouped by thousands. And then click apply. And then for the measure, I actually want to count sales. Okay, and you can see how it creates zero. So the number of sales or the frequency of number of sales from uh, zero to a thousand, and then from a thousand to two thousand, two thousand to three thousand. That's what we used to use as a histogram using the class function. And then you would ha there was an expression to uh, change the display values, but you no longer have to do something like that now. So you just grab a histogram and then add a simple dimension. In this case, sales is the particular frequency for that particular dimension that I'm looking for, even though sales is a measure. And now you can see 
we have our sales from 0 to 5,000 and the number of sales of that frequency, 5,000 to 10,000, etc. But here you can also go to histogram settings and you can turn off auto and you can get a little bit more control. So for example, if I wanted to replicate buckets that I did with the thousands range, I'll select bar width and then change the width to a thousand. And then basically from here to here is zero to a thousand, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, etc. So the last new visualization is the box plot. So a box plot, also known as a whisker diagram, is a standard way of displaying a distribution of data based on a five number summary, which includes minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum. Now, before I jump into this with an example using sales data, let me just use simplistic number range. So for example, I have starting at my minimum, a number two, and I have some numbers in between in order, and then my maximum is number 65. And these are just represented by a simple identifier called ID. So I have two fields. I have a ID field and a number field. So I grab my box plot, I add my dimension, and I'll choose ID as my dimension, and I'll add my measure, and we'll just do a number, and there it is, and just choose sum. And there is an example of that one item that represents this number range. Okay, so if we go to box plot elements, if I say percentile based, and then the whisker positions, you could have 1st and 99th, 5th and 95th, 10th and 90th, or I can just do simple min and max. If I do that, then you can see the exact representation of the numbers here. So the minimum is 2, the first quartile is 6.75, the median is 12.5, third quartile 17.5, and the maximum is 65. And you can see those numbers basically match those set of numbers I have loaded within the data set. Now, there's a variety of different user settings that you can also turn off presets and set. I'm not going to get into this in this particular video here. Um, those can be identified within the online help, and you can see which setting best fits your particular needs. Okay, so let's just create a real box plot example using some sales data and uh, product name and category name. So I'll grab the box plot, I'll add the dimension, category name, I'll add the measure, sum of sales, and then I'll go to my fields list and let's get product name as well. Let's change our orientation. Let's change the appearance and let's make it horizontal. Okay, so based off of the settings here, we have babyware, and then these are the products within that babyware sales. So each one of the products, their range of sales is represented within this box plot. So you have your box start, your first quartile, median, third quartile, and box end. And that's because of the um, box plot elements. It was set up, again, I'm not going into these in detail. I'm here just to show you what's available. You can get into more detail on this within the... Uh, online help but I do know if I choose percentile based and I can choose min and max for example we then have our minimum range maximum range and then our quartiles and our median and the final feature I would like to demonstrate is the ability to set a dimensions colors and the way you do that is within your master items you create a new dimension in this case I'm just going to use category name and you can set a simple single color. I'm just going to do that now for demonstration purposes. Add that dimension. I'll use a bar chart as the visualization for this. I'll add the dimension. And we'll look at a sum of sales. And notice that all the bars are red. Okay, so that basically means anywhere that I use this category name within a visualization that supports the coloring for that dimension, it will always be red. Okay, but that's not really the new feature. The new feature has to do with being able to designate which values are a particular color that you wish. So 
you'll notice that within the interface where you set up the dimension, you also have something called value colors. So I'm just going to set this back to transparent and then go to value colors. And then I can do this with a color scheme. That's either one color or um, 12 colors, for example. In this case, we're just going to select the uh, standard 12 color color scheme. So for example, baby wear, I'll just use the default palette here. We could have baby wear as blue, bath clothes as red, children's wear as yellow, and then ladies footwear as gray. Okay, so we set these particular values in this dimension to these four colors, and then we left these other ones alone. And then I click Save. Okay, now by default, it removes the single dimension color, but now you go to your appearance settings under Colors and Legend, and then change your custom color to By Dimension. Okay, and then you can see there's a checkbox here, Library Colors. If I uncheck Library Colors, it uses the standard 12 color, 100 color color scheme. If I check Library Colors, it respects what I set up within the uh, that interface. Okay, so we can see a real-time change here under value colors now. And let's make men's clothes just green. Click save and you can see men's clothes turned green. Okay. So that's it for the visual analytics new features. Um, look for other videos that will be coming soon on other new features that are going to be available within the June 2017 release, such as our advanced analytics capability that allows you to integrate with R and Python, and also the new offline capability that will allow you to download a app from, for example, ClickSense Enterprise Server, and allow you to run it offline on a iOS device like an iPad. And those videos will be available within the Click community as well as the Click YouTube channel. Please take a look at these other resources to learn more. And if you have any comments or questions, please post them wherever this video is posted. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, guys.